So when we finish playing with the auto chart, the next thing we can do is add an additional chart. So instead of resetting this and saying, well, we don't actually want that one, if we want to keep this, we can click the plus on the bottom right. And this allows us to start building a new chart. And instead of using the auto chart feature, we're going to go into the right and select a specific type of chart. So in this scenario, I'm going to use a pie to start out with. And what happens now is I'll drag in something to slice up the pie for the colors and then something to specify the size of each slice. So there's my pie and that's pretty easy to drag in and, and set that up. And from here what we're going to do is have a look at some of the styling. So again our formatting menus are in this area of the toolbar here. And as there's quite a wide variety of formatting options, we're just going to explore a few of those. So we're going to start out with things like color. So if we go to our demographic field, we can actually go to color settings. And what you'll see here is we have a few options. So at the moment we're using the default option, which means it's uh, using whatever the administrator has defined within our system settings. Uh, so the colors go from blue to green to yellow and cycle through. If I change to reference code, remembering that I had a reference code applied to my demographic field and reference codes are those things that map a value to a description. Another form of uh, use for reference code is to supply a color for each value. So if I switch to reference code, you'll actually see that each of those changed. And we've actually had assigned a color to each of the values in the reference code. Now alternatively, we can change this and make it monochrome. And that just means that we've uh, picked one color and made it all shades of that color. So if I go into my series settings here, I can adjust my color accordingly. But for now, we'll just go back to the default. We can also do things like change the look and feel of this pie. So depending on the chart, you'll have a whole host of custom settings in this settings menu here um, that relate to the specific chart. It, in the case of a pie, there's quite a few. So what we'll do is just switch a whole lot of these around and you'll see the change that takes place. So we're actually going to change the shadow. We might turn it off. Uh, we'll change the outline to white and we might change the starting position to 12. And we'll just close that and you'll see our pie chart change. You'll also be able to see uh, that maybe we want some labels. You may have seen labels on a pie chart before in one of the examples. So we'll go into our labels menu, we'll enable those, and for pies specifically, we've got some options. So category means that it's going to show the name of the demographic in the label. Value means it's going to show the actual number of uh, sales or the invoice amount. And percentage means it's going to show you the percentage of whole. So we'll just put all of those in our label and see what that looks like. All right. So firstly, that's not really lovely looking. <laughs> so we might want to change the way that that's styled. But secondly, we'll also notice that our legend is now obsolete because we've got our categories listed in our labels. So what we might do is go to the legend menu and disable that just by changing the position to none. Okay, now we've got a little bit more space and we just didn't need that legend. So let's go back to the labels and we might say in this scenario we don't actually need the value, we're looking for the percentage and we might just customize the look of this. and see how we go. Okay, now I've made that font way too small, so let's just come back in here. And you'll see we now have custom labels, and we've removed all that yellow styling. And we could adjust the fonts as we need to as well. Okay, so that's some of the styling options that are available. Now if I just add another chart,
and we have a look at perhaps a bar or a column, what you'll see here is we just add in some fields. We also have a, a color option that allows us to use metrics for some charts. And what this does is provide a gradient scale based on the metric we've put in the color. So see here, this is probably not the best example, but you'll see here that the larger bars, the height is defined by the invoice amount, but the actual color is divine, defined by the estimate. So we may be able to see if there's direct relationships here. So it's actually looking like there might be. So the estimate seems to be, the lower the estimate, the whiter the bar and the lower the invoice amount, the smaller the bar. And seeing as our smaller bars are the lightest ones, it looks like there's a correlation there. So we could investigate that further. But if you wanted to change that, you could just go into the settings and define some other colors. Now, a really common question here is, well, we've got three colors in our gradient scale. Why is it not using the red? But what it's actually doing is it saved the red for the negative portion of our scale. So if we had negative invoice amounts as well as positive ones, we would have red and the middle color is where zero lies. So it's our midpoint and blue is the positive portion of the scale. So we could potentially change that and maybe do something like this. Okay, so you can see we've just picked up the positive portion and we've got yellow through to orange and you can customize that as you need to. Okay, so that's our chart formatting out of the way. The next thing we're going to have a look at is go to the output step and we'll actually have a quick look at what a multi-chart canvas is. Now we didn't mention this in the storyboard before, but basically what this is is a way of displaying multiple charts that you've created in one space. So when you only have one chart, it will display here automatically. But if you have more than one, you'll get this panel on the left and you'll be able to drag your charts onto this canvas. So we'll drag them on and we'll just explore those. We might resize them, see what they look like, give them a little bit more space. And you'll also notice in this menu here that we have some widgets. Now some of these allow you to customize canvases uh, so that you can create all sorts of different looks and feels for your canvas. Uh, we can add things like images, text and icons. So if we add an icon here, we'll select an icon, we can change the color, we can change the size if we want to, and we could even put that over the top. Now I'm not the most creative person so I'm not going to give you design tips on how to lay out your canvas. What I will do is leave this report and we will, it's a mess so we'll leave it in draft mode again and we'll just have a quick look at the dashboard and we'll go to our analysis tab because I think we have some canvases on there. Hopefully, yeah. So this report that we're looking at the moment is a canvas. And what you'll see here is we have some icons, we have some statistics, and we also have a map. So this is one big report. We also have one here that's about Twitter. And if we open this up, you'll see that this is a canvas as well. So what we've done here is we've created a line chart, we've created some numeric charts, and we've placed them all very carefully over a background image that we've loaded. And it's created a lovely little infographic that we use on our dashboard. So the canvas itself gives you a lot of flexibility and display. All right, so that's the basics of charts. We will be revisiting that in the more advanced content creator uh, session. So don't worry too much. And what we're going to do now is just revisit our storyboard because we need to go to the next section.